as the countdown to Mars continues. The perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the Red Planet. Did you know that since its inception, NASA has spent millions of dollars sending the weirdest objects into space? They have sent a block of cheese, some jellyfish, toilet paper, mouse sperm, amongst many other items. However, in recent times, they have pushed the limit on how much they can spend on objects that might have no meaning to us. In 2020, NASA spent nearly half of its entire budget, over $9 billion, on designing 43 titanium tubes. These spendings have left us puzzled and asking many questions like, what exactly are those tubes for and why would NASA spend $9 billion on them? Welcome to Future Mission. Join us today as we explore the importance of NASA's billion dollar sample tubes, why they took so long to make and the important role they play in NASA's plans for the future. It might be difficult to believe, but if there's anyone we can blame for NASA's billion dollar tubes, it is this guy, Galileo Galilei. Yes, the legendary Italian astronomer's discovery of Mars in the 15th century is the root cause for NASA's billion dollar expense on titanium tubes. Stick around long enough and we'll explain everything. When Galileo discovered the red planet, it ignited the curiosity of several generations of scientists after him to channel all of their attention and curiosity towards one goal, discovering Mars. In the early days, the only way scientists could explore Mars was through telescopes, stories, and art. We stared into the galaxies, wrote books, painted, and sang songs about the red planet. Now we exist in an age of technological advancement and extreme prosperity. We are at a time where our speculations have transformed into scientific experiments and research. With our modern technology, we have sent many rockets into space in the search for an answer to the question that has plagued humanity for almost half a millennia. Is there life on Mars? While technology has made it possible to answer this question, the journey towards that answer has not been easy. We have had some wins and many embarrassing failures. In 1962, the Soviets were the first to try it. They launched nine probes to the Red Planet with the relatively unambitious goal of achieving a flyby and hard impact landing on Mars. Every one of those missions turned out to be resounding failures. It wasn't until 1965 that NASA's Mariner achieved the first successful flyby, and it wasn't until 1971 that the Soviet Union made history by landing a successful probe, Mars 3, on the surface of Mars. However, the craft did not last up to two minutes before it stopped working. Still, it was a step in the right direction. Five years would pass before NASA's Viking 1 became the first Mars landing that yielded results. The rover operated for over six years and transmitted several images back to Earth. Those images immediately became the subject of a debate that is still on to this very moment. Some scientists believe that the mission had discovered life on Mars, whilst others refuted that claim. So, did NASA's Viking 1 discover life on Mars in 1976? Unsurprisingly, the answer to that question is not straightforward. The results that the mission turned in hinted at the existence of life in the soil of Mars. However, some scientists were able to disprove this claim and found that the life Viking 1 found was really just a result of inorganic reactions on Mars' surface. To prove the existence of life on Mars, a rover would have to be sent. It would have to collect samples, and those samples would have to be sent back to Earth for scientists to make their findings. Up till this very moment, achieving a feat like that on Mars is incredibly difficult. First, the climate on the planet is incredibly harsh, even for a machine, and the science and engineering required to make this happen is incredibly difficult. In the 58 years of Mars exploration, and with over 49 missions to the planet, there are only six functioning rovers currently on the planet. And among these six, a rover called the Perseverance rover is one of the most recent. It is also our focus because it is tied directly to why NASA felt it was a bright idea to spend billions on tubes. Stick around long enough and we'll explain everything. The Perseverance rover was sent to Mars on the 30th of July 2020 as the first of three missions to the Red Planet. At the moment, many scientists believe that Mars had early life and that the evidence of it exists in a mostly dormant form beneath the planet's surface. So, they sent the rover to extract it. And this is why NASA decided to spend so much on the sample tubes for the Mars mission. 
The primary function of the 48 tubes is to hold samples that the rover extracts from the Martian soil. However, the samples weigh less than one kilogram, so it still does not explain the obscene amount that was spent. Well, this is where everything is revealed. The sample tubes will be gathered in a second mission and launched into Mars's orbit. Then a third mission would bring those samples back to Earth. However, if any of those tubes have any form of contamination in their journey to and from Mars, the entire multi-million dollar project, along with decades of hard work, will be a waste. Why? The reason is simple. When samples are being collected for scientific examination, the instruments need to be 100% sterile, pristine and clean, or else they will be contaminated and the entire scientific experiment will be pointless. In the case of the Mars mission, the Mars dirt were the samples and the sample tubes had to be 100% clean in order to ensure that the evidence of life they were gathering was in fact Martian life. Everything was taken through a multi-million dollar sterilization process that spanned several months. From the titanium tubes to the spacecraft carrying the sample tubes, every piece of that mission was taken through several levels of sterilization at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. The engineers and scientists sterilized and tested the spacecraft to levels far beyond the most sterile operating room. They had clean rooms that led into other clean rooms, and inside those clean rooms, they blasted the titanium sample tubes with air, used ionized water on them, and dipped them in baths of acetone so that they would be clean without a doubt. After this intense process, they cooked the tubes. All 43 tubes were made to endure temperatures of 150 degrees Celsius for almost 30 hours. Then they moved their attention to sterilizing the Perseverance rover. The rover is the size of a small car, and it was built specifically to analyze the Martian surface with cameras, radar x-rays, and spectrometers. Scientists methodically cleaned every part of the spacecraft, and they collected over 16,000 samples to determine that the vehicle was pristine. Then, the 43 titanium sample tubes were stored in a system within the Perseverance rover that had 3,000 moving parts and could protect the samples for up to 10 years. Officially, it was the most intricate and technologically advanced system ever sent to space. All of the hard work and billions of dollars paid off when the Perseverance rover landed in the Jezero crater on Mars on the 18th of February 2021. This crater was chosen because it was believed that it was once the site of an ancient Martian lake bed. Some billions of years ago, there was a lake of water in that crater, and so it was chosen as the Perseverance landing spot because it had the highest chances of traces of Martian life. At the moment, the Perseverance rover is using its tools to methodically check Mars' soil before choosing and collecting the appropriate samples it needs. This process will continue for the next two years. Now you might ask why the Perseverance rover isn't conducting its own experiments on Mars instead of waiting to bring it down to Earth. Well, the answer to that question is simple. Even with all of the advanced tech that the Perseverance rover packs, it is nothing compared to the more capable instruments and laboratories that can be found on Earth. The process of determining life would include detecting microbes and fossils in soil. One would have to cut those rocks and make thin slices out of them that would be viewed under a microscope. The rovers simply do not have that level of technology. This is why after the Perseverance rover is done collecting samples into its tubes, the second phase of the Mars mission will kick into effect. The sole aim will be the safe return of the Mars soil sample. A Mars lander will be launched in 2026 and it is scheduled to arrive at Mars in 2028. When it lands on the surface of Mars, it will deposit a fetcher rover that will be provided by the European Space Administration ESA. This fetcher rover will retrieve the samples and take them back to its rockets. Now, this is where the mission might hit a snag. At the moment, NASA is not certain how it will launch a rocket from Mars because the red planet's atmosphere lacks one element necessary for takeoff, oxygen. So they have been working on a method for creating rocket fuel on Mars. The current solution is the Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Equipment a gold square box that has been inserted into the Perseverance rover and will convert Mars' atmosphere into oxygen. If this process works, then the second lander mission will have a bigger version of the gold square box. So let's imagine it is successful. Let's imagine that the second lander can safely receive the sample tubes and can take off from the surface of Mars towards the Earth. It would be a milestone achievement, the first rocket ever to launch off another planet.
This stage of the three-part mission will involve a separate orbiting spacecraft that will be launched from Earth around the same time as the Fetcher. It will rendezvous with the sample return container and ferry it back to Earth. A NASA-provided payload on the orbiter will provide the capabilities needed to capture and contain the samples, placing them in an Earth entry vehicle that would land the samples safely on US soil. Once the samples are on Earth, scientists will conduct detailed chemical and physical analysis in laboratories around the world to look for signs of past life on Mars and perform many other studies beyond the capabilities of instruments delivered to Mars. The sample return mission alone is projected to cost around $9 billion, and the initial Mars 2020 mission has already cost $2.7 billion. When you factor in the process of studying the samples and the amount of money that would be spent developing tech and keeping track of the mission's progress, then that initial $20 billion begins to look like a slice of massive interplanetary cake. But will it be worth it? That's the real question. What if we do not find organic signs from any of the 43 titanium sample tubes that we retrieve? Would that be enough to confirm that a red planet with a surface area of 144.8 kilometers squared is really devoid of life? A lot of time and money has already been spent making the Mars mission a reality. As we wait for the mission to come full circle, we can only keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best.